so for years, because we haven't had um, therapies that work, if, if you think about when the first MS DMT was approved, it was only 1993. So we're really talking about a short amount of time. And because our main focus for this time is really we need to get therapies out there, we need to get stronger therapies, we haven't really thought of age as a factor to consider until now when we're seeing that because we're doing so much better at earlier diagnosis, at treating, the prevalence of MS is shifting, right? So uh, it, it used to be younger, but now the average age of an MS patient is getting older, right? Um, and that's because we're doing a much better job at treating and taking care of them. So they're living longer, they're um, able to survive, and then we've had treatments for a longer time. So now we're actually starting to think about age in a way that we've never had before. So the data is actually fairly lacking because it's just kind of a recent phenomenon that we're looking at. Um, for me, how I would treat, uh, how I kind of think about age is then, um, are there, what's actually happening in their disease? Um, so if they're a new diagnosis of MS, is it because they had a new enhancing lesion or a new change, new relapse, or what are, did they finally just come into you know, they've had symptoms for 30 years, but they finally just started coming to a doctor, right? So those are two different patients. One is they most likely have the disease. They've just never seen anyone. The other one is there's something new going on. And, and I treat them kind of differently in that anyone with any new disease activity, new inflammation, there's still evidence of peripheral inflammation. We treat them just like a brand new diagnosis and anything else. If more likely they've had disease for a while and there's really no new evidence, then I'm treating them as I would a progressive patient in that what are their comorbidities, what are their risk factors, is there any real benefit of instituting a medication now um, versus can we watch and wait, right? So um, uh, if, if I don't think that they have active disease, I'll watch them, I'll check MRIs, and then we'll monitor for disease activity. If they do have active disease, then we treat just like a presenting patient who has new disease activity. Um, overall, uh, in both cases, we're also looking at comorbidities, we're looking at um, symptom management, um, you know, do they have spasticity, do they have leg weakness, would they benefit from uh, physical therapy, exercise, do I counsel them on nutrition? Um, older patients will likely have more comorbidities, so, you know, what is their uh, risk of heart disease, risk of cancer, um, and then their social networks, you know, are they... Um, able to kind of do some of the interventions that I talked about. Can they, can they come to clinic? Can they drive? Are there um, social barriers that would affect? And, and that kind of also seems to correlate with age as well.